The law behind Rose During the Age of Enlightenment, within Albion's capital city of Bowerstone, two homeless children could be seen wandering around the streets, surviving any way that they could. The eldest, a girl called Rose, with her younger sibling that she called Sparrow. Orphaned at the young age of six, Rose did not remember much about her parents. She did remember that her mother was a beautiful princess that lived in a castle, while the gossip mongers of Bowerstone believed that she had actually been a servant to the Fairfaxes. As for Rose's father, she had no memory of him, but hushed tones amongst the residents of Old Town whispered that he was unnatural and that he got what he deserved. With her parents gone, Rose had to grow up quick to raise Sparrow on the cold streets of Bowerstone. She would make sure he had food, entertain him and read him stories to sleep. His favourite being a story about a warrior girl that fought snow monsters. With each year, Rose worried about how she would survive each winter. With a charming personality, she would befriend travellers passing through Bowerstone. Sometimes, the travellers would even let her stay in their caravans to make their winters more comfortable. Although friendly with the locals of Bowerstone Old Town, the criminals of the town would at points attempt to use her desperation to manipulate her into committing acts that she did not want to do. One of these criminals being Arthur, who would offer Rose money and food in exchange for less than savoury acts, to which her answer would always be no. With dreams of living in a castle herself, Rose would write in her diary about sneaking in with Sparrow, daydreaming on how they would find a secret passage one day, and live within the castle without being noticed, always thinking about making a better life for Sparrow and herself. With the kindness that travellers had shown her, she planned to visit the gypsy camp the next summer. During an extremely cold winter, Rose and Sparrow walked the streets of Bowerstone looking for food and a way to stay warm. This winter, they had secured a makeshift shelter away from the main streets. Walking down the main street, they come across Mystical Mergo, a man selling magical objects, one of them being a music box that would grant a single wish to the person that used it. For this artifact, he asked for only five gold pieces. Due to her circumstances and tough life, Rose shouts out that there is no such thing as magic. To this, an old woman in the crowd explains that Mergo isn't aware of the artifact he has actually stumbled upon, and that the music box may actually get Rose and Sparrow a step closer to living within Castle Fairfax. To this, Rose decides to take the risk and they complete tasks around Bowerstone Old Town to earn five gold coins. Instead of spending the gold on food that would allow them to eat for a week, they purchase the music box from Mergo. Placing the music box on a table in view of the castle, Rose makes a wish. As the music dials and a light emanates from the music box, she begins to believe that the box will give herself and Sparrow access to Castle Fairfax. But as the box spins and gets louder, it disappears. Disappointed, with her hopes shattered, she and Sparrow return to their makeshift shelter and go to sleep. That night, Rose and Sparrow are woken up by guards and they are summoned to Fairfax Castle. Excited, they go to the castle with the guards. Meeting with Lucian, 
he inquires about the box and how they were able to use it. Asking them to stand on a circle, a blue aura surrounds them, confirming to Lucian that these children were in fact heroes. As he attempts to reach through the aura, the blue light turns red, indicating to him that these are actually the heroes that were foretold to stop his future plans. In response to this, he shoots Rose. As she falls to the ground in agony, Lucian turns the gun to her younger sibling where he shoots him, resulting in him crashing through the window behind him. As she lays on the ground in agony, Lucian finishes her off. Many, many years later, Rose opens her eyes and finds herself surrounded by a luscious forest. A wish from the spire had brought her back. Initially scared, she comes across a hooded figure, Scythe, who had disappeared from Albion centuries before. He promises her that one day she will be reunited with Sparrow and so she writes him a letter informing him that she is alive and well. Although undocumented that Rose ever returned to Albion, scholars examined this claim of a forest that went on forever and believed her to be within the Greenwood, a forest realm which had been said to be home to all things, a magical realm that few had claimed to have visited, exclaiming that Whenever someone had a strange feeling of loss or yearning, they were said to be pining for the Greenwood. It is also said that Rose fell in love within this realm, and so she never left, while other scholars believe this realm simply to be a fantasy for those that wish to escape the feeling of loss and that Rose had never actually come back. After a difficult childhood, Maybe Rose is now alive and well within the Greenwood with a companion, finally able to relax and enjoy herself. At least, that is what she deserves. Hello heroes, thank you for watching this little episode on Rose. What did you think? What would you like me to cover next? As always, like, share and subscribe if you found this interesting. Join our Discord. Now, enjoy your day. Bye.